Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us for Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy. Uh, first up, has this weather graphic again. There are no uh, mornings, watches, or advisories out, uh, not only for central southern Alaska and uh, the Panhandle, but also for the northern areas as well, at least uh, through tomorrow. Now, this is a picture of a webcam shot. FAA webcam shot of Petersburg, Alaska. There in the panhandle, they picked up about four or five inches of snow uh, today before it changed over to rain this afternoon, with the temperatures just above freezing. So probably seen the end of the snow for there and areas to the north still have a chance. Moving on, this is uh, McKinley, Mount, uh, McKinley Park webcam and you can see just clear skies. This is a good example of ceilings and visibilities being unlimited here and that should continue through tonight and into tomorrow. We we'll look for some increasing clouds late in the afternoon but uh, they'll just be of the higher middle variety. On the satellite today we had uh, moisture moving through with a trough weakening system here uh, cutting across the panhandle. Uh, becoming a little more showery today but uh, did bring some uh, Decent amounts of rain, nothing heavy there to the uh, several areas here, mostly in the central and southern panhandle. Juno picked a couple inches of snow up and then not much of anything farther to the north. There are still some showers off the coast here. And in the Gulf of Alaska, a weak circulation right through there and uh, actually south of Montague Island and southerly flow on the eastern side of that is pushing clouds up to the north Gulf Coast with a uh, kind of increasing. Uh, snow shower condition with uh, Middleton Island picking about a quarter of an inch of rain today, but clouds are spreading northward there into the Copper River Basin. You can barely see it right there. Otherwise, we have this uh, upper level low over the central, or actually over the northern interior, and that's kept it uh, pretty cloudy up in that area. And then it breaks out here as you head south and southwest into the southwest valleys. And uh, this is the ice edge right there. That's not a cloud bank, but that's the ice edge. And then we have this frontal boundary here on the north side of a pretty snappy low Persia area south of the Fox Islands. And that brought uh, winds gusting to 67 miles per hour at Nikolsky today. And some uh, rainfall, rainfall not all that impressive with this, just about a tenth of an inch at uh, on Alaska today with lighter amounts toward the Alaska Peninsula along with lighter winds and uh, really not much uh, just clouds out there at ADAC and then Shimia didn't report otherwise the uh, Pribilofs look like they slipped into a break there we've seen some clear skies on the chart again uh, this low in the Gulf for about a quarter of an inch of mostly rain to Middleton Island but uh, a little more precipitation with this trough into the panhandle as I mentioned with uh, Craig in Petersburg picking about four tenths of an inch water equivalent. So nothing too terribly heavy there. And uh, otherwise, we still have those uh, gusty outflow winds along the North Gulf Coast, especially in Prince William Sound. Bly Reef uh, reporting 40 mile an hour wind gusts and Potato Point 45 miles an hour and close to 40 at Keystone Canyon. So uh, low pressure in the Gulf here, enough of a gradient with a higher farther to the north to keep those outflow winds. Uh, pretty brisk, but not the case in the panhandle. And uh, for tonight, we'll see uh, still a trough here along the coast. Uh, southerly flow, though, so that's going to continue to uh, bring moisture along the entire panhandle. We can see it gets a little more showery here off the coast with a uh, chance of uh, snow showers north Gulf Coast or periods of light snow in the Prince William Sound. And that might start advancing into the uh, southeastern Copper River Basin areas but dry in the uh, 40 mile country and upper Tanana Valley. In fact, dry here across central and southern Alaska. 
And then these flurries here with that system up over the northwest starting to uh, pull back to the west here. As you can see, it uh, begins to clear out over the eastern Brooks Range with uh, high pressure there. Otherwise, very tight gradient continues here. Uh, increasing gradients, increasing east and northeast winds for the southwest coast. Seas windy in the Pribilof, St. George Island, seeing winds gusting to 50 miles an hour uh, today, as did uh, Unalaska. Unalaska, those winds will come down with the front lifting northward there, but they're not going to end completely. Still a pretty good 960 millibar low just to your southwest. They'll stay very windy across the Bering Sea. Less wind here for the western central Aleutian areas and snow changing to rain pattern. That kind of pattern here for Kodiak Island. There is that moisture and warmer conditions slide northwestward. And uh, hard to say how much snow. I wouldn't think it would be much. will jump the Aleutian Range into Bristol Bay there, but it'll definitely be cloudy with a chance of some light snow. Otherwise, St. Lawrence Island flurries hopefully will end. And then for tomorrow, that area up here, optimistically, I have it blowing off to the southwest there with those northeast winds and dissipating. So it looks pretty good up there. Maybe some clearing. Uh, going for, uh, I hope this much clearing occurs, but it'll definitely be dry. Still have high pressure there just uh, over toward Mackenzie Delta. And snow and moisture starting to advance a little bit farther up now with this warm front spreading again rain for Kodiak and some snow into the southwest interior southern Kuskokwim Valley and on the eastern slopes of the western Alaska range. It'll be slowly working northward through the day. It stays a uh, pretty good chance of uh, rain along the outer coastline with a mixture inland and the panhandle watching this next system come up from the south there. That'll increase the winds, gale force winds on the south coast tomorrow afternoon with an increasing, uh, with the rainfall increasing as well. And it looks like uh, this low will take off to the north, east there. It'll deepen and then weaken as soon as it hits landfall uh, tomorrow night. And on Tuesday, back here to the west, we still have this low out there west of Nikolsky and a very tight gradient here across the Bering Sea right up to the southwest coast. And then for uh, Tuesday, we'll see that low it does track inland there and then kind of take an easterly turn, but really weakens uh, up to a thousand or up to 10, uh, 1,011 millibars. Another system down here to the south, uh, a lot of moisture of that, southeast flow, so that even starts to spread rain across Dixon Entrance late in the afternoon. Otherwise, precipitation uh, tapering off, becoming more showery. Uh, into Tuesday afternoon with uh, no precipitation up over in the northern areas and variably cloudy along the North Gulf Coast. Look for the Wednesday increase here, especially for the higher elevations from the Alaska Range and up into uh, well, the eastern interior here. With the new snow, you can see some blowing snow associated with that. Otherwise, that uh, first uh, front weakens into a trough, just some scattered light snow showers with that feature from uh, Selwick Valley in toward uh, Eastern Norton Sound, and then all that heavier moisture back to the west. Low pressure still uh, hanging out just north of the central Aleutian, so showers in the milder conditions on the east side of that. And then this front weakening will bring a chance of rain into Kodiak Island, or occasional light rain likely there. Chance of uh, rain or some type of precipitation on the south coast of the Kenai Peninsula, and then the upslope areas of the Alaska Range, otherwise dry. Susitna, Manuska Valley, Copper River Basin, all the way up to the north and northwest, right on out to the Arctic coast. And then a uh, mixture of rain or snow for ADAC, but the wind's not all that bad, and it stays cold enough for snow out towards Shimia. Looking at the low temperatures forecast for tonight, uh, mid-20s for the northern panhandle to upper 30s down to the south. Otherwise, back below zero, Copper River Basin. So sit in the valley back down to that 10 to 20 below range again, otherwise single numbers for the Kenai Peninsula. And 20 to 30 below north of the Alaska Range all the way out to the Arctic coast. Near zero here along the southwest coast, a little below at St. Lawrence Island and quite a bit above zero, 24 at St. Paul. For the highs tomorrow, mid-20s there for the Pribilofs. Staying below zero, St. Lawrence Island across the Yukon and part of the Cuscoom Delta. Right up and along the Alaska Range, below zero north of the mountains, above zero south of the mountains, and above freezing for Kodiak Island. And uh, mid-40s possible there for Sitka, Mount Edgecombe, and Port Alexander. 
Lows Tuesday morning, uh, milder here over southern Alaska, that increasing moisture and uh, southerly flow with uh, Kodiak staying above freezing and uh, teens here for southern Alaska, still below zero up to the north, minus 32 Fort Yukon, otherwise 15 to 25, most other areas in the 30s for the Panhandle and mid 30s there for the central Aleutians, below freezing out at Chimia, look for a low of 22 at St. Paul. And then the afternoon high is shaping up like this, uh, 10 to 15 below or 10 to 20 below for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast, uh, except minus three at Kaktovik. And uh, just a little above 20 below here over the Northeast, warming into the lower 40s over Bristol Bay and upper 20s, South Central Alaska. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Flying weather here, VFR from St. Lawrence Island all along the southwest coast, eastward here into uh, northern Cook Inlet on up into the valleys and then some marginal VFR here through the north central interior back down across the Copper River Basin into the Gulf of Alaska and some of that extends up along the northwest coast. And uh, IFR for the Panhandle and some IFR down towards Sitkanak and another batch here just northwest of the Alaska Peninsula. And for the afternoon, that really expands out here, that zone of IFR, uh, but really uh, not affecting only that over the open water purple off St. Matthew Island, and then right up into uh, Togiak Bay, Dillingham, down into the Aleutian Range, and some more with southeasterly flow pulling moisture up. So we got IFR advancing from Kodiak Island up and along the eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range into Prince William Sound. Pretty good VFR through the interior north and west of the Alaska Range. And for Tuesday morning, patch IFR left over over the southeastern panhandle, otherwise marginal VFR from there across the Gulf up into about the entire southern third of the state with just isolated areas of IFR here until you get out to the southwest coast again, Dillingham, Togiak, and on up the coast to uh, Makoriuk to the Pribilofs and marginal for the Aleutians. VFR, central northern interior out to the Arctic coast. That holds through uh, Tuesday afternoon as well up there. And then farther south you get, you start picking up some marginal VFR here. Uh, probably Nikolai McGrath stay VFR, but Sleep Mute Antioch, uh, definitely Marshall possibility of some IFR there. Uh, greater possibility over the northern central Bering Sea. Aleutians stay marginal, Kodiak some IFR, mostly south and Prince William Sound and the Northern Panhandle uh, IFR. For passes, Anatovic and Adigan tomorrow, uh, kind of a marginal VFR kind of day coming up for those two areas. Lake Clark and Merrill look for uh, conditions to deteriorate throughout the day. Starting out VFR could possibly become IFR late in the afternoon Monday. And for rainy VFR, windy also looking good there with VFR continuing in Testa. Looks like another VFR day there, and Tanita, I think a hold VFR. And for Portage, marginal VFR becoming IFR, which may last uh, most of the day there, especially from uh, midday on. And then for Chilkoot and White, that's an easy one, IFR. Freezing levels at the surface here, a little farther now out over the Bering Sea, a little farther south here, uh, back south of the Permaloffs there, uh, some colder air kind of shifting off this way. And uh, 2,000 feet, though, still a ways south of Kodiak Island, but pops up into the northern panhandle. Icing, uh, moisture could bring some considerable moderate late in the day up toward uh, Prince of Wales Island, probably not quite making that, otherwise just isolated moderate from Dixon Entrance up to Lynn Canal Glacier Bay in the North Gulf Coast, above about 5,000 feet with that uh, swath of moisture extending westward across the Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island, Kamishak Bay, and then down along the southwest coast there, kind of expands here over the Bering Sea from the Perbolofs down to Adak, Atka, over to Sinikulski, and Unalaska. Jet stream. Uh, high that's over the Bering Sea today retreats back into the Russian Far East uh, 24 hours from now, and therefore the upper low here over the interior is going to slip back to the Seward Peninsula. And then we got this one advancing eastward. And that's going to push southerly flow in across southern Alaska here. So uh, another system here coming up on the southeast coast. So you got southerlies at about 80 knots. 
And for 9,000 feet, uh, here's a storm there south of or near the Aleutians, actually. Not too bad on the or 40 to 50 knot winds coming up toward the Fox Islands. Easterly is 30 for the Pribilofs, and then coming back around uh, 30 to 40 knots. Southerly flow 20 to 30 knots right up into the interior here, uh, diminishing as you head north, east northeast, 25 to 35 for the Arctic coast. And southeast winds on the increase here as this thing. Uh, pulls up and then starts tracking north and eventually to the northwest. You can see those winds uh, come up considerably there along the coast of the Panhandle and 3,000 feet, 35 knots, 55 back to the southwest there, much lighter toward the border and north, just 5 to 10 over the central northeast interior, 35 Kodiak Island, 25 central Arctic coast, southeast 20 to 30, strongest winds up here over the Bering Sea, Wrapping back in around, but uh, kind of a divergent flow, so not quite as strong. Turbulence, moderate chop for the Aleutians in Alaska Peninsula. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, joined again by Eric Stevens uh, from the GINA, or Geographic Information Network of Alaska at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Thanks for joining us again, Eric. Glad to be here. Thanks. Uh, we are talking about satellites today and uh, what, what are satellites? And the easy way to talk about that would be to uh, introduce our friend the globe here, which is a round uh, spheroid type shape. We haven't been on a flat earth uh, as far as uh, history is known for uh, several hundred years now. And because of that, we, we also know that we are orbiting around other objects in space and that objects are orbiting mm -hmm. around the earth as well. We call all those things satellites in some form or fashion, right Eric? Right. Well, this leads to the discussion of Johannes Kepler's oh, yeah. research 400 years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, did some of the early work and founded the three laws of planetary motion, which okay. are important to planets mm -hmm. and also to weather satellites. Okay. Kepler's first law talks about how uh, the orbit of an object around another object is mm -hmm. uh, an ellipse, not necessarily a circle. It's kind of a flattened circle? Yeah, okay. depending on how I mean, flat it could be. Okay. Uh, for our purposes, we'll just say they're mostly circular. Okay. The second law is most important for us, though, yeah. and that is the closer an object is to the thing it's orbiting, mm -hmm. the faster it goes. So in the solar system, the planet Mercury is mm -hmm. the closest planet to the sun. It orbits the sun in 88 days. It moves at 100,000 kilometers an hour. It's a it lot is different just than Earth. moving. Okay. Right. And um, further out from the Earth is Jupiter, mm -hmm. and it moves at only one quarter the speed of Mercury, and it has to uh, go further. So it takes 12 of our years for Jupiter to make one lap. Hmm. Okay. The further out you are, the slower you go. Okay. So we're talking about planets. Why? What does it have to do with weather satellites? Turns out, Kepler's laws apply to planets orbiting the sun. They also apply to satellites orbiting the Earth. Okay. You know, our natural satellite is the moon. There's right. the famous Apollo 8 Earthrise shot. Beautiful shot. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You could just talk about that forever. <laughs> uh, December 1968, uh -huh. the moon is about a quarter of a million miles away from the Earth. Okay. It takes a month to go around mm -hmm. the Earth. It's that far out, it takes a full month to do an orbit. Another shot here of the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. Instead of being 250,000 miles out, the ISS is only 250 miles out. It's really close. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't take a full month for the space station to go around the Earth. It only takes right. 90 minutes. Uh -huh. It's so close, it just whips right around 90 minutes. Okay. So weather satellites, there are a number of weather satellites and there are a number of orbits. The further out you have the satellite, the mm -hmm. longer it takes to go around the Earth. And this is important because different satellites have different purposes. So we have a satellite here. This little okay. salt shaker lid will serve as our satellite going around the Earth. Let's say you have a satellite that's 22,000 miles above the Earth. Uh -huh. This is kind of a magical spot because at that distance, it takes a full day for the satellite to go around the Earth. Oh, Imagine okay. if you put your satellite 22,000 miles up from the equator uh -huh. and had it go with the Earth as the Earth spun. At the same speed. Right. Okay. The satellite goes around the Earth just as fast as the Earth itself is turning in effect. The satellite will hover in one spot, oh, I see. and it, it appears when you make a movie loop of picture after mm -hmm. picture after picture, you can replay that and you get these movie loops. Geostationary satellites, these okay. are called, uh -huh. these are stationary in appearance, and uh, they provide a constant frame of reference. We've got an example here, another nice thing about these satellites, since they're that far out mm -hmm. at 22,000 miles, you can see from pole to pole, which is nice. So they're, they're pretty broad view and a constant frame of reference. So th those are the pictures, that if you're watching a weather satellite loop on TV, your favorite weather mm -hmm. show, that's the picture that you're going to see is you one that's bet. sitting over the same spot. If you're seeing a, a movie loop play uh -huh. again and again, that came from geostationary satellites. Okay. That's the only way you can do that. Yeah. 
The bummer, though, for us in Alaska is yeah. we're up on the very top of the planet, and mm -hmm. for, for geostationary satellites to work, they have to be over the equator. So for the geostationary bird to view Alaska, it's kind of like reading a book, but you're reading it edge on oh, like that. Right. So there's another kind of orbit called the polar orbit, okay. which is nice. We're near the pole. Yeah. And here's a satellite. Those polar orbiters are much closer to the Earth. Mm -hmm getting down toward International Space Station elevation, and they're not in the equatorial plane, rather their orbital plane is inclined okay. like this, and the Earth turns under that satellite as the satellite orbits. Hmm. The nice thing about that is for Alaska, the satellite will go right over Alaska a few times a day, and so you get a much closer image. We've got a, a shot from the uh, Sumi NPP satellite, uh -huh. Uh, specifically, it's a true color image from the VIRS sensor, that's an acronym there, okay. but it's a beautiful shot of Alaska and you can see so much detail, the kind of detail because you're close in. Very high resolution. You couldn't yeah. get this kind of view from geostationary satellites. Okay. The, the advantage of these polar orbiters is nice close imagery, you can mm -hmm. see a lot of detail. The disadvantage though is that the satellite flies by right. and then you have to wait a while to get the next image. And it, if geostationary weaknesses are that you're reading the page like that, mm -hmm. the polar orbiter, you're reading the page straight on, but it's, it's so close, <laughs> and then right. it zips by, okay. and you have to wait for the satellite to come around the Earth again. So there's no one perfect solution. Okay. Different satellites for different orbits, uh, each has their strength, and amazingly, it all comes back to Johannes Kepler and his laws of planetary motion, the same laws that govern how the planets orbit the sun, they govern how the satellites orbit the Earth, and even our little pretend salt shaker right, right here. Right, okay, well since, uh, what, the 1957 Sputnik, we've been uh, putting man-made objects into uh, orbit around the Earth and starting to get pictures back. Who knows what mm -hmm. will happen in the next 50 to 100 years. Oh, Amazing it's, it's stuff. It's a growing science and uh, the future is bright. Thank you so much for joining us again, Eric, and uh, for more information on GINA, and uh, what the satellite uh, systems do there and uh, what Eric's been talking about today, you can go to the web address on your screen. For Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis looks like this here, Bristol Bay westward. And uh, then taking a due track to the north here, uh, west of St. Matthew Island, and with the increasing easterly winds and northeasterly winds uh, coming up here in the next couple of days, looking for the uh, ice edge to shift westward. It'll be interesting to see if it hits uh, St. Matthew Island from the east instead of the north like it usually does. Coastal water forecast for tomorrow. Good gales here with that storm approaching the pan now. 45 knots out of the southeast. Uh, Small craft advisories out of the east on the north coast, 15 knots, Lynn Canal, southeast 20, Stevens Passage, and then gale force southeast release for Clarence Strait. Those will turn to small crafts and become more southerly for Clarence Strait on Tuesday. Light northeast winds, Stevens Passage, 25 knot northerlies for Lynn Canal. And uh, small craft advisories here, kind of a uh, east wind at 25 and a west wind at 30 on the south coast there with 18 foot seas and then winds become lighter as you head up the coastline more northerly. Prince William Sound northeast 15, southeast 20 for the eastern north gulf coast and then small craft, small craft advisories here western north gulf coast barren islands uh, 25 knot winds gales for Kamishak Bay 35 out of the northeast and 30 knots from the northeast for southern Cook Inlet northeast 15 north of the Forelands. And then for Tuesday, northeast, 15 knots here uh, continue for the northern Cook Inlet area, small craft advisories, southern Cook Inlet, and easterlies at 30 for Kamishak Bay, southeast 30 the Barren Islands, and then lightening up winds for the north Gulf Coast, east southeast 15 to 20, northeast 10 with two foot seas, Prince William Sound. Kodiak Island, southeast 20 here along those eastern marine zones. Shelikoff Strait, northeast 25, and then Sitkanak to Castle Cape, southeast at 15. Bristol Bay, northeast at 30 knots, and then easterly at 30 here on down the Bering Sea side of the peninsula from Cape Sarachev to Castle Cape, south winds, 30 knots, 18 foot seas. Outlook for uh, Tuesday, south to southeast 30 for the uh, peninsula, east 30, Bristol Bay, east 25, Shelikoff Strait. Castle Cape to Sitkanak and up the east side of Kodiak Island, uh, southeast 30 knots, 14 foot seas. And for the Fox Islands tomorrow, 30 to 45 knot winds, east 
southeast here for Unalaska Island, southeast and northeast for Unmac Island with those seas as high as 23 feet, and then north to northeast 40 to 45 knots, good full gales here for the central Aleutians, and northeast 35 from uh, Mchitka all the way out to Chimianet too. And for Tuesday, northeast 30 knots out here to the west, northerly gales increase, uh, and then it gets a little squirrely here on Adak and Atka. Westerly is at 30 south of the islands, northeast 40 on the Bering Sea side. And for the Fox Islands, south to southeast, 25 knots, seas 8 to 15 feet. Southwest coast looks like northeast winds, 30 knots. Brisk wind advisories from uh, Nunavak Island all the way up to St. Lawrence Island. And small craft advisory south of the island, 45 knot northeast winds for the Pribilofs and minimum gales for St. Matthew Island. Those winds uh, drop back to about 30 knots on Tuesday there for St. Paul and St. George. East 30 knots, south of uh, Nunavak Island, north of Nunavak Island, east 30 knots. Northeast 25 to 30, Norton Sound and St. Lawrence Island, and gales for St. Matthew Island. And starting on the eastern Boulevard Sea coast, northwest at 10 tomorrow, and then the central coast turns easterly at 10. Those light east winds all the way down to Cape uh, Beaufort, and from there down to the Strait, north at 15. And the winds pick up a little bit on Tuesday here, especially from uh, Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort at about 25 knots. So brisk wind advisories there from Cape Thompson up the west side, 15 central coast, 20 knots out of the east for the eastern coastline. For tonight, uh, upper level low starting to move now and pull southwestward, so it's going to take that moisture back to the west here. Uh, very light, just clouds and flurries, patchy fog, dry over the uh, southern part of the state, but increasing uh, chances of moisture here, eastern North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, near the Copper River Basin, and unsettled for the Panhandle, and rain, Kodiak Island, big storm here, really puts a squeeze on the atmosphere, and those east-northeast winds uh, tighten up, especially here from the Pervilofs down toward the central Aleutians tomorrow with that low center just to the south, dry over the interior, uh, gradually starting a warming trend here across southern Alaska, and then there's that storm coming off. The panhandle weakens considerably the next day. Thank you for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.